The Rothschilds bought controlling interest in England's British East India Shipping Company and the illegal opium trade with China. They offered junior partnerships to New England's leading American families. The Russell, Coolidge, Delano, Forbes, and Perkins families became fabulously rich, smuggling opium aboard their speedy clipper ships into China. In 1820, Samuel Russell bought out the Perkins Syndicate and ran the opium smuggling operation with his partner, Warren Delano, Jr., who was the grandfather of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The United States flag was designed after the British East India Company flag with 13 red and white stripes. Both flags copy the red and white striped sails of the Viking ships, which were the color standard for the tribe of Dan. Finally, Britain found a commodity that China would take, opium. Imported from India, just a few chests at first, and then thousands. When the Chinese authorities tried to stop the opium trade, the British sent in their gunboats. Nearly 20 years of turmoil, the Treaty of Tianjin in 1858 not only allowed opium to be imported, but handed over China's ports and all her international trade to Western control. After the war, opium poured into China on an even greater scale, and her emperors were powerless to stop it. In 1842, the British stole Hong Kong from China in an opium drug deal called the Treaty of Nanking. The Russell family, who controlled the U.S. arm of the Rothschild drug smuggling operations, set up the Skull and Bones Fraternity at Yale University. America's big money families formed the fraternity's inner power circle. Taft, Russell, Schiff, Harriman, Bush, Warburg, Guggenheim, Rockefeller, Stimson, Weyhauser, Vanderbilt, Goodyear, and Pillsbury were all members. These families intermarried over the generations to form America's big money aristocracy. Skull and Bones member Alfonso Taft catapulted his son, William Taft, right into the top job at the White House. President Taft's 17th Amendment to the United States Constitution guaranteed the right of big money insiders to hand-pick senators and buy control of the United States Senate. Today, the most influential members of the CIA, the U.S. government, and big finance are skull and bonesmen. The Skull and Bones Brotherhood is rooted in Jewish Kabbalism and in European Freemasonry, which practices similar death and rebirth rituals. Freemasons are blindfolded, symbolically slain with a noose around their neck, and lowered into an open grave. Once raised from the grave, they must look towards a light called the Morning Star. The Latin translation for Morning Star is Lucifer. The phoenix bird and double-headed eagle are important symbols in Freemasonry. In Egyptian mythology, the phoenix bird is a god who rose to heaven in the form of a star like Lucifer after his fire immolation of death and rebirth. Death and rebirth themes in satanic witchcraft are marketed to youth in movies like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. The Hollywood movie lots are owned by the Illuminati Lehman Brothers, Rothschild agent Kuhn and Loeb, and Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Freemasonry has a pyramid structure. The highest level is a 33rd degree mason. Solomon's temple in Israel was located at the 33rd parallel. Most Masons remain at the third degree and provide a cover through their community charitable activities. The Illuminati at the top of the pyramid is the all-seeing eye, 
At the bottom are the unthinking, hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying, God-fearing debt slaves called the Goyim, or sheep. Giuseppe Mazzini of Italy was a 33rd degree Mason who replaced Adam Weishaupt as head of the Illuminati in 1834. Mazzini was a member of the Italian Carbonari and created the Mafia's blood rituals and secret oath. He gave the dreaded Cosa Nostra the name Mafia. Mafia is an acronym spelling the names of the original Mafiosa godfathers, M for Mazzini, A for Otto Riza, F for Ferti, I for Incendi, and A for Avaligmenti. The Mafia arrived on American shores in the 1890s with Illuminati financing to establish underground networks and the black market system. Mazzini appointed America's Albert Pike as sovereign pontiff of universal Freemasonry and the coordinator of the Illuminati U.S. activities. Pike was a Tennessee Ku Klux Klan judicial officer. A known Satanist, Pike indulged in phallic worship and the occult. He wore a satanic Baphomet symbol around his neck and used his bracelet to summon Lucifer. Pike used the KKK to keep blacks out of the Masonic lodges. In August 1924, Imperial Wizard Hiram Wesley Evans organized a parade of 40,000 Klan members down Washington's Pennsylvania Avenue to the Washington Monument. This event proved the Klan had achieved power, not just in the South and Midwest, but on a national level. In a letter to Mazzini dated August 15, 1871, Pike graphically outlined a blueprint for three planned world wars. World War I would weaken, topple, and destroy the powerful Tsarist government in Russia. World War II would pit Great Britain against Germany, destroy Nazism, and create the Zionist state of Israel. World War III would be ignited by fueling aggression between the Zionists of Israel and the Arab world, who would eventually destroy one another. Social, political, and economic chaos would then force the masses to accept one world army and one world government ruled by the Illuminati. In Pike's famous Masonic guidebook called Morals and Dogma, he writes, Lucifer, light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not. Albert Pike was a Confederate general in the American Civil War. The Rothschilds sent British agents to conspire with Pike and with U.S. politicians and provoke the rebellion that started the American Civil War. The Rothschilds, whose massive fortune had been built on provoke wars and war loans, offered loans to both sides of the Civil War at 24 to 36 percent interest. When President Abraham Lincoln tried to stop the loan sharks by issuing greenback dollars interest-free, a gunman with European connections named John Wilkes Booth shot him down in cold blood. <laughs> Following the Civil War, Albert Pike was convicted of treason and sent to prison, but President Andrew Johnson, a 33rd degree Mason, pardoned him. One of Johnson's first acts as president was to veto the Civil Rights Act for blacks, who had been shipped in chains to their wealthy American slave owners. Stealing slaves was a crime, but torturing and beating them was not.
A statue of Albert Pike, a convicted traitor, Satanist, 33rd degree Mason, and Ku Klux Klan racist, stands today in the heart of Washington, D.C. On the opposite side of America stands an honorary statue of Giuseppe Mazzini, the Illuminati Mafia boss who put the letter M for Mazzini into the name Mafia. Close by is another statue donated by the French Grand Orient Temple Masons,